Hello everyone, my name is Ron Z. Welcome back to another episode of Coast Start, and today we're taking a look at the 2019 Honda Accord. Let's roll the clip. Welcome back everyone. I hope you all enjoyed the cinematic we did for the 2019 Honda Accord. Now apart from 2018, pretty much this car has stayed the same. Now this car was awarded the car of the year in 2018 by Ajax here in Canada. And if you're unfamiliar with the redesign, let's take a closer look at some of the key features and uh, highlights that I really enjoy in this car. Now this car, first thing I noticed is done in San Marino red popping out all the lines, corners, giving that additional sporty look for the Honda Accord. Now we all know, for me at least, I'm used to the V6 Honda Accord. We have changed that to the four cylinder here in 2019 or 2018. But looking at the front bumper, you're gonna notice a pair of LED headlights and LED daytime running lights with some of the very key design here that follows the Acura headlights, giving that luxury sophistication look of the Honda Accord. Moving at the center, you're gonna notice two kind of distinctive styling with mesh and the grill lines in the front with the big Honda Sensing badge right beneath the plate portion over here. Now, Honda Sensing is standard across all Honda vehicles here in Canada. I like that a lot, safety oriented, and of course, making sure that you and your family are as safe as possible on the road. Before we move to the side, below the headlights, you can notice a pair of LED fog lights to complete the front bumper. Moving at the side of the vehicle or the profile, you can notice a nice pair of 19 inch aluminum alloy wheels, five spoke, kind of directional ish with two tones, aluminum and black, slapped on with some nice Michelin tires. Now, before I move on to the rear bumper, what I really like about the design of the Honda Accord is this groove that combines the lower end of the door into the side skirts. Look at how nice this groove is, kind of invites you to the rear end or the rear bumper of the Honda Accord. I like that a lot, and of course, design-wise, they added this kind of grooves and sporty elements of the Honda Accord. Pop open here, one of the most convenient things I like in cars, capless fuel tanks, and just in case you forgot to lock or even push the cap back in, you don't have to worry about that anymore. It is capless fuel tanks. Moving up above, notice the shark fin antenna, again, for the additional sporty elements of the Honda Accord. And moving to the rear bumper or the rear side of the vehicle, I love this a lot because number one, you have a very subtle spoiler over here on top of the trunk. I kind of like it when luxury cars or entry luxury cars have sporty spoilers but not too big so it's overpowering the entire vehicles right guys and of course the led headlights are going to be paired with the led headlights here in the rear with the honda accord badging over here and the sport badging over here as well now there are two different trims for the honda accord number one is a 1.5 turbo sport and two liter sport touring or two liter touring pretty big power differences which we'll test out when we drive this vehicle pop open the trunk look and how inviting how big and spacious the rear trunk is definitely a lot bigger than the honda civic of course if you're looking for a civic or a court there's some pretty distinctive differences with the length and the width of the vehicle as well but i just love how much stuff i can fit in here and i mean usually we test out the vehicle's trunk to see if we can fit all of our filming equipment in here and we did that with ease so we don't have to put anything in the rear seats now the rear seats do fold 40 60 for the additional storage compartment if you require it and finishing off the sporty element of the rear bumper you can notice a pair of exhaust chrome finishes again i like that touch a lot not too intrusive but giving you that additional sporty look of the Honda Accord without taking away its luxurious feel. Now, let's take a look at some of the key features and highlights on the interior of the Honda Accord. 
Before I take a seat in the 2019 Honda Accord, let's explain the fabric or the leather seating. This is done in two tones. Number one is fabric in the middle with leather components or leather seats at the outer skirts of the seats. Now this is four-way power adjustable seat in the sport trim line with lumbar support over here as well. I'm gonna take a seat inside. Now the first thing I do notice in the all new Honda Accord, well, all new for 2018, but the all new Honda Accord is how nice, how modern everything is. Definitely a big step up from the previous generation of the Honda Accord. I mean, looking to my right side, this has two options as well. Number one is the gear selector that you see over here in the 1.5 trim line. But if you do go with a two liter option, whether it be touring or sport touring, this becomes the push button gear selector, which we see in the Acura platform as well. Additional luxury for the Honda Accord. Two mode, Econ and Sport. And, and one of my favorite features I love in cars in 2019 is brake hold functions. Very convenient, especially in the day-to-day -day commute here in Toronto or 401. I hate that. And this will alleviate the, some of the pressure that you have on your leg. Looking up ahead, you have your dual zone climate control. Very nice with heated seats. Moving up ahead, you have this 8-inch display screen, great saturation, clarity, and the icon are arranged in a way that is very easy on the eyes. Some of the key notable feature on the Sport version is this multi-view backup camera. One, two, three different views, and of course, the lines turn with the wheel. I like that a lot. And moving up ahead, you do have your standard sunroof over here. Headliners are done in cloth or fabric. I don't really care about that. Pretty nice. Looking ahead, I do see this nice leather wrapped steering wheel with the paddle shifter right behind it. Fits very nice snug onto my hand. Once you get to the Touring and the Sport Touring trim line, you do have a heads up display, but unfortunately the Sport line, it does not come with it. I mean, for 33 grand, you do get a lot of value in it, but if you wanna spend close to 40 grand, you can get all this additional app option as well. And last but not least, looking at my left hand side, you have a power windows, power mirrors, whatever, a lot of the safety features over here out to my left hand side. And that's about it in the front seat of the Honda Accord. One of the biggest thing I noticed in the Honda Civic is that how tight the seating is in the rear seats. I mean, for the Honda Accord, we all know that the car is longer, has a longer wheelbase, and look how comfortable I am in the rear seats. And on the front seat, it is adjustable to the way I am liking it and I'm about six feet tall, and look at how much distance it is from my knee or my leg space to the uh, driver's seat, right? And my head space is not too, too bad, but again, it's a lot better than the Honda Civic. But of course, again, the Honda Accord has a longer wheelbase. On the center, once again, guys, it's a little bit tall, so I don't think I can see uh, sit very comfortably in the center. I mean, if I were to actually squeeze in everybody, I have to, I have to put my uh, legs in the center. And then again, I am giving birth uh, once again in the back seat of a car. Overall back seat, very spacious and very comfortable for those long rides if you decide to carry five passengers in the Honda Accord. And one of the great things about the Honda Accord and across any Honda platform is that it doesn't matter which trim line you pick, you do get the eight inch display screen versus some of the other manufacturer where if you do go with the premium line or top of the line, you then get a bigger screen, right? So enjoyable across all trim lines. And I like that a lot about Hondas. And here's another storage compartment for your smartphone where you can get a wireless charging pad if you go with the Touring or Sport Touring trim line. And the center compartment over here is actually very spacious so I can feel I feel like I can put in a lot of space here and hide a lot of things in here just in case I want to keep it out of sight and last but not least looking at the digital display screen right in front of me it is seven inch but I, what I love about it is that there's no lines that protrudes outwards and it, it is just flat on the left hand side you can customize it to a couple of options and as soon as you hit the sport mode, it changes the dials to red, which give you the additional sporty element of the Honda Accord. And hitting an econ, you get the nice green lights to let you know that you are driving this car on an economical or fuel efficiency mode. And before we go for a drive, the average spend of this car of gasoline is about 1500 per year at 20,000 kilometers at 93 cents per liter. We all know that's pretty much impossible to get that kind of gas prices here in the GTA. We're at about a dollar, a dollar or five currently, but in summer we're seeing a dollar 30, right? So I would expect the fuel spent per year will be around 2,500 penny on the uh, area you live in and penny on the gas fluctuations here in the GTA.
not bad not bad at all guys we hit upwards of 6,000 rpms in this accord so definitely a lot of activities and sporty element and that kind of excitement that you get for the honda accord and you do hear the engine and the exhaust responding a little bit with the noise that kind of give me the responsiveness that i am driving this car on sports mode and the dials do turn red which again additional sporty accents to let the consumers know or let the drivers know that you are in a sporty feeling emotion attitude of the honda accord turning it back on econ mode the left and right lights are both in green so you know exactly whenever you're in fuel efficiency mode i mean i do feel like this econ mode and the sport mode should have have an even more of a distinctive comparison between the two modes other than the lights other than the throttle response and the uh, rev limiter I feel like the steering should be a lot more different I mean for regular the steering is very heavy very stiff very good for highway driving and whenever you experience a lot of potholes or uneven terrains and pavements but if I'm gonna go get groceries I'm gonna go get food I'm driving on local roads I do want the steering to be light not feather light but just in case i need to do a wide turn or three-point turn in those kind of environments but there isn't really a distinctive difference between the modes i mean the steering feels almost the same right but if you do give me the option to feel differently i will quite appreciate this car a lot more by having the 1.5 liter force in the engine you're only allowed to have a six speed or the cvt transmission i mean for one you guys all know me as well i'm not a big fan of the cvt transmission um, if you do go with a two liter turn the two liter sport it becomes a 10 speed automatic transmission which i prefer that a lot more and the center console will be changing from the more of the accurate design the push button transmission gear selector i think that kind of feeling for me is the accord look because it follows the acura as well right acura i would say will be just a little bit under bmw audis and mercedes it is definitely up there for luxurious and upscale look for me if you're on a budget and still really enjoy the accord platform i mean the cvt will do it you can still get a lot of fun just personal preference i do prefer a 10 speed automatic transmission and the uh the paddle shifters over here pairing that to a cvt is a little bit cheesy for me as well um and i do notice the road noise from the tires even though they're michelin tires the road noise is still quite a bit louder than what i would expect i mean i do kind of like it if the cabin is a little bit more quiet but the suspension is a lot more enjoyable than the civic a lot more softer and i guess this will be the attraction to more of the older crowd that aren't really looking for aggressive performance in this kind of vehicles. I mean, when I think about Accord, I think more of the Japanese luxury. Not quite the Lexus Acura, but just a little bit under it, right? But I would say it's still comparable. 33 grand, affordable, but not too, too expensive for people to completely remove this out of the equation right so the engine noise paired that to the dual chrome exhaust tip finisher with it with the exhaust do give you the a little bit added noise for anyone seeking performance in the uh in the accord platform so that's all for me today guys i hope you all enjoyed the review and the cinematic we did for the 2019 honda accord i know this car was the car of the year in 2018 and let me know if you think this car should be the car of the year in 2019 make sure you give us a subscription help our channel grow slap the like button if you're from toronto or canada and i will see you on a brand new episode of co-start next saturday